Hello and welcome to the AutoX Show. This week, we're testing three of the most affordable performance motorcycles in the country. The BMW G310R, the Honda CB300R, and the KTM 390 Duke. We also test the BS6 ready Mercedes-Benz E-Class to tell you just what Bharat Stage 6 means to you. But first, here's Abhishek's attempt at mediating between Jared, Arup, and Shivank. Needless to say, he has his work cut out for him. India is the largest two-wheeler market space in the world, and that's a well-known fact. And this market space has been evolving and very fast. So today, there's a type of motorcycle to suit every type of enthusiast on all sorts of budgets. And possibly one of the most exciting segments here would be the accessible performance motorcycle segment. Now the KTM Duke 390 was the first bike to pioneer that segment. But today we have a lot of offerings with different characteristics in the segment. And to represent each of these different types of motorcycles, I have with me today my colleagues, each of whom have different needs from a motorcycle. Meet Shivang. Shivang is a young and hardworking man who loves to ride. He wants something with new age technology and the best performance. And that's why he rides the KTM Duke 390. And this is Jared. Jared is a middle-aged man who likes fast bikes, but he also wants something that's comfortable and usable on an everyday basis. So he rides the Honda CB300. As for Arup, well, he's married and settled down, and he wants something that's classy and a little more sophisticated, and that's why he rides the BMW G310R on his vehicle. So my pick from the segment is the KTM 390 Duke and I think it is the default choice of the segment. You see, first of all, it looks the sportiest of the lot. It has got a racy exterior with this loud orange paint job. Look at the frame, it's exposed, it looks very sporty indeed. The wheels, they are also orange and they look sporty. And the front end is my personal favorite because it has got that beefy look. It comes with LED headlamps that look very sharp and then there are those thick WP folks. So overall, if you are looking for a sporty motorcycle, and I'll come to the performance later on, this bike not only delivers on performance, but it also looks the sportiest of the lot. Now the problem with millennials is that they get carried away very easily. They look at specs and features and they feel it is the best in the business. But what I have with me is the BMW G310R. It resembles the S1000R, which is a great statement by itself. Now the design is simple, but it's muscular. Now that is how a naked bike should be. What I love is the way the tank is sculpted because it makes the bike look bigger. And on top of that, if you look at the front golden forks, you cannot mistake this bike with any other bike. Now the G310R comes with an LCD instrument cluster, which has the speedometer, the tachometer, trip meters, fuel mileage, whatever you need, it has. Sure, the display is not color like the Duke 390, but that's not a deal breaker at all. But speaking of deal breakers, BMW could have used LED headlamps instead of the old halogen ones. There's only one way to sum up the design of the G310R. In words of Leonardo da Vinci, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and that's exactly what this bike is. So there are many reasons why I've chosen the Honda CB300R. Let's start with the design. It's a very nice compact design and I just love the way it looks on the road. It's very unique compared to the other bikes in this segment. Starting with the nice LED headlight, it looks very nice, very classic design. The fuel tank is nice and narrow and the seat's super comfortable. So Honda calls this bike a Neo Sports Cafe, but that's not what it looks like to me. It looks more like a street fighter. It's very nice and aggressive and very sporty. So with the indicators, it also looks very nice. They're nice and narrow and sharp. I love the narrow frame, the compact frame as well. The engine fits in very nicely. It's got a nice set of tires and of course these awesome show of suspension. I really think it looks better than the Duke and the BMW G310. And this bike is something that really definitely appeals to me. 
Now coming to the performance, the KTM simply dominates here. You see this bike has the biggest motor of the lot. It has got a 373cc engine and it delivers 43 bhp. None of the other bikes here are in the same zone. So you could almost say that it feels like it's from a segment above and that shows when you ride this motorcycle. The performance is really impressive, the throttle response, everything about this bike, it just goes. Everything just screams performance. Now to match the firepower of the engine, KTM has equipped this bike with all sort of gizmos and it comes loaded with top quality cycle parts. You see the suspension setup and the riding posture, it's all inclined towards sporty performance. And when you're riding this bike, it shows, you know, the steering is really quick, the handling is the best here, it feels the most stable around corners and it is also the most involving of the three bikes here. And not only acceleration, even uh, when it comes to top speed stakes, this bike is the fastest. You can see 165 kmph on the speedo easily, which is not the case with the other two here. So when it comes to performance, the KTM is simply the best. And next, honestly, this bike is super comfortable to ride. Even though it's really small, for a tall rider like myself, I love the way the ergonomics are. The KTM is just too cramped and too uncomfortable. This bike is very nice, starting with the seat. It does seem like it's hard at first when you get used to it and it's very nice and comfortable. The handlebars are low and flat so you don't put too much weight in your wrists. And then of course, your legs are in a slightly aggressive position. And that's great because if you want to ride in a very uh, fast manner around twisties, it does help you a lot. But then when you're in the city, it's super comfortable. The show suspension also is very, very nice. It's not too stiff like the KTM Duke. It's very applied on all road surfaces. And I love the way the tires grip the road. They're super nice. Honestly, overall, this bike is so practical for an everyday basis, whether you're riding in the city or on the highway. Sure, it doesn't have the performance or the peppiness of the KTM Duke, but this bike is so much more usable and it's so much more enjoyable. Now, the BMW G310R's seat height is only 785 mm. Now, this is what makes the bike practical. As you can see, I can keep my feet easily on the ground. Now, the G310R is powered by the same 313cc engine, which is also in the TVS Apache RR310. Now, going by the specs, with 34 bhp of power and 28 nm of torque, it doesn't sound like an all-conquering naked bike. But let's not just jump to conclusions yet. Now, when you ride this bike at low speeds, it offers enough grunt, but as it's a high revving engine, it is better to keep the needle somewhere in the 4000 RPM range. Now, the mid-range power band is where this bike is the happiest. You can take it somewhere between 5000 RPM and go all the way to even 9000 RPM. It just doesn't let you down. It reaches a three-figure mark at ease, but mind you, there are vibrations that can be felt from the tank. Now, it is not as pronounced as the Apache, but when the speed increases, you can feel vibrations also from the seat. Now, this bike has a 50-50 weight distribution, so the well-balanced chassis carves out corners without any problems at all. It's an effortless experience, and on top of that, it feels stable and planted, so you feel really confident. Now, coming to the KYB suspension setup, it is just ideal for our riding conditions. It soaks in rough patches, bumps, you throw anything at it and it makes sure that the ride comfort is not at all compromised. Now that is something which the other two bikes will not be able to boast about. Now on top of all of this, this is also the best equipped bike here. It is the only motorcycle here that comes with a TFT color display and you can connect your phone to it uh, through Bluetooth. You can receive calls, you can change songs, you can do a lot, which is not the case again with the BM or the Honda. And then it has also got a ride-by-wire throttle and a slipper clutch. Now the icing on the cake is its pricing. You see it has got the best performance, it has got the biggest engine, it's the best equipped bike here and the handling is the sharpest. Plus it looks the sharpest and sportiest of the lot. And even then KTM has managed to price it really aggressively. So it's not just value for money, even on all the other counts the KTM simply is the best here and that's why it's my choice. So what are you expecting from a bike of this segment? Well, you should be able to ride in traffic conditions easily, it should have enough power and on top of that it offers an X factor that is its handling capabilities. Let's just look at the BMW badge and it speaks for it all. Yes, it is an expensive bike and starts at 2.99 lakhs X showroom price but when you look at the fit and finish, the build quality 
and even the way the buttons function, it easily is the best in the segment. And on top of that, the G310R beautifully balances both practicality, comfort, and of course, performance. One of the things I really love about this bike is that it's so light. It's 140 kilograms and that's much lighter than both the other bikes we have today. And it's just so easy to maneuver, so easy to handle, especially when you're in traffic conditions. It's very nice to uh, swivel through uh, tight spaces. And then when you're parking, uh, pulling the bike in and out, super comfortable, very nice again. And then of course the suspension works very nice on all road surfaces as I mentioned before. And then of course you've got the Honda badge on this and that means reliability. This bike is gonna be super reliable. The quality already is top notch. It's the same price as the KTM Duke and it's priced much lower than the BMW. And honestly, in my opinion, the quality on this bike is just as good as the quality on the BMW. It might not be as big and impressive on the road, but when it comes down to the bare necessities of what you want to do with this kind of a bike, it's absolutely amazing, can do almost anything and super nice to ride. The handling's fantastic with the show suspension. It's just an overall light steering bike that's got the peppy throttle and it's a very nice overall machine that has good value for money, good reliability and great quality. On top of that, it's super comfortable and highly practical. The fact is that each of these motorcycles is very different in its own way. And it's a good thing because finally, we have a lot of options that Indian buyers can choose from today. So each of these bikes appeals to a different type of customer. The Duke 390 will appeal to a much younger group of riders who demand high performance, sharp looks and new age features. The CB300 meanwhile appeals to riders who do not wish to compromise on comfort and practicality but also demand good overall performance. And then the pricey G310R is aimed towards riders who are brand conscious and expect great riding dynamics with sophistication. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we bring you the lowdown on the impending Bharat Stage 6 emission standards. Welcome back to the AutoEd Show. Now Hyundai's sister brand Kia is finally ready to launch its first model in the Indian market. The Kia Seltas SUV is already available for pre-bookings at Kia dealerships across the country and prices will be announced in the third week of August. It'll come with three engine options, all BS6 ready. A 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol engine, a 1.5 turbo diesel, and a 1.4 turbo petrol. All of which will come with a range of transmission options. It'll also be connected like some of the launches we've already seen recently. Plus, it'll offer a bunch of first-in-class features like an eight-speaker Bose sound system, head-up display, and a range of different driving modes. Stay tuned for a full review in a couple of weeks. But first, here's Ishan with a lowdown on exactly how BS6 works. Technology as we know it has been changing by leaps and bounds. In the past 20 years or so, we've seen a revolution in computers. We've seen, well, it's much more than a revolution in mobile phones. And of course, automotive technology has been progressing for decades now. But as the number of sort of cars grow, as the number of transportation vehicles grow, air pollution has been a concern and we know it very well. What India is going to introduce next year, in April 2020, it's a landmark for India. It's going to introduce its toughest emission standard till date. It's the Bharat State 6 standard. It's roughly based on the Euro 6 standard that's already applicable in Europe. What will the Bharat Stage 6 cars offer? They'll be cleaner, they'll be more efficient, they'll be less polluting. But there are lots of doubts in the minds of customers about cars available today, which are the Bharat Stage 4 standard cars, versus what will be available from April 2020, the Bharat Stage 6 standard cars. Today, we're going to drive this Mercedes and try and answer your questions about Bharat Stage 6. Why this Mercedes? Well, Incidentally, Mercedes-Benz India was the first manufacturer to announce that well before the deadline of April 2020, they're going to make their whole lineup Bharat State 6 compliant. This E-Class, this E220D that we're driving today is already Bharat State 6 compliant. So it only makes sense to understand the new standard better. We're going to drive a car that already meets it. Let's see how it goes. The 
the single biggest change in cars to meet Bharat Stage 6 standards are going to be after exhaust treatments. Now, what are after exhaust treatments? You see, every time an engine burns fuel, there's a certain amount of polluting particles that are created. Uh, these pass through certain catalytic converters to reduce the pollution. But to meet Bharat Stage 6, only those catalytic converter solutions are not going to cut it. What companies are going to fit are called DPF, diesel particulate filters or petrol particulate filter. What these do, well, they have a certain, a certain chemical formulation, a urea-based liquid that is injected into the polluting particles coming out, which takes away a lot of the pollution and enables these engines to make Bharat State 6 emission standards. Of course, what that does is the car needs more space to fit that urea particle, to have that injection mechanism to work effectively. And that urea tank is not uh, unlimited, you know, it, it uh, runs out after a while. Uh, when it runs out depends on your driving conditions, also the car, the size of the tank, but it needs to be refilled regularly. While we drive this, I'm going to give you more details on how the particulate filter me mechanism works, what are the pros and cons of it, and how much we can expect them in India next year. When it comes to BS6, I think the first question that uh, pops up in everybody's mind is, are the cars any different to drive? Well, you know, I'm driving the C220D. Uh, this generation of the engine now produces 192 bhp, 400 nm of torque. And to be honest, uh, it's extremely refined. It's very easy to drive. And I think it would be, unless you're told that this is a BS6 versus a BS4, or unless you are a tester who has access to pollution measuring equipment, it's pretty much impossible to tell the difference between a BS4 and a BS6 engine, at least in the E-Class that we're driving. Uh, what happens when the BS6 standards, particularly in diesels, come to smaller cars? I'm not so sure, but I don't think, I don't expect it to be that different. The E-Class, of course, remains, uh, it, it offers you the features that have made it the best-selling car in its segment. In India, it's a huge success worldwide, and you can see why it's really comfortable, it's really easy to drive, it's got acres of space, especially in the rear seat, it's fantastic. There's none of its rivals can really match that rear seat space. The air suspension works terrifically well. And just the quality levels, equipment levels, refinement levels, it's a really good car. And that's and you can understand why it sells so much, why it's sells why it's so popular among customers. Yes, on paper with the BS6 engines, it's uh, even more cleaner, less emissions. So all that has made a difference, but practically. As an experience, this E-Class is as good as any other version and I mean, you know, there's hard to find flaws with it. Now coming back to the whole BS4 versus BS6 confusion. Essentially, like I said earlier, BS4 allowed the cars or vehicles to pollute to an X limit. BS6 takes this, you see, this is two steps up because in normal scenario, you would go from BS4 to BS5, BS5 to BS6. Here, we've gone straight to BS6. We've taken a two-step jump. So that always makes a big difference. Now the vehicles will be far less polluting compared to BS4. If it was BS5, this, the change would be somewhat marginal, but in this case, there's a big change. Uh, and I think it's gonna impact overall emissions. A few factors that are very critical for the uh, implementation of BS6 in India. You see, Supreme Court has laid down the guideline. First April 2020, you can't do anything. You have to sell BS6. If you have BS4 stock, that's your problem. So that, that aspect is there. The other big part of BS6 vehicles is the availability of very high quality fuel. Now, it, even under uh, uh, BS4, certain amount of uh, high pollutants in the fuel were allowed. But in BS6, the biggest factor is that the sulfur content in fuel, both in petrol and diesel, has to be under 10 parts per million. So that's a big deal. The government, of course, is committed to getting that into Pan India before April 2020 because implementing BS6 without the clean fuel is always going to be a tough job. Here, Mercedes has done something unique. They've manufactured their BS6 engine, which they're introducing into the range, which is compatible with BS4 fuel, and that's no mean feat. I mean, that's a big achievement as far as engineering is concerned. The other factor that a lot of customers ask me, when BS6 comes in with the new fuel, Will our BS4, BS3 cars comply? Yes, it's backwards compliant. You will not have an issue running your BS4 or BS3 cars on BS6. But running BS6 vehicles on lower quality fuel is always going to be a problem. So that's something that the government has to be very particular about. The other thing that would be, uh, that, that is uh, sort of going to be a big uh, turning point is that 
BS6, like I said earlier, needs exhaust treatments. Now, to fit that exhaust treatment, you need extra space. Uh, there's cost, there's weight, there's extra maintenance because when the fluid level goes down, you have to refill it. Like on the E Class and most of Mercedes' range, the minute liquid, the urea liquid that is filled in, Mercedes calls it add blue. It gives you a warning and tells you that you need to fill up. In fact, after a level, if it completely dries out, the engine either refuses to start or goes, in, goes into limp home mode, making it that much more sort of making you do the effort of putting in the fuel or taking the service center of putting in that uh, liquid fuel to make sure that the pollution cleaning system works absolutely perfectly. Uh, how that will be implemented, is implemented in smaller cars, that remains to be seen. Second thing, uh, what everybody has been saying, there is a certain amount of cost attached to BS6 technology. All that technology does not come cheap. So will we see prices of cars going up when BS6 comes in? I think that's very likely. And like I said earlier, in smaller cars, fitting that system is going to be a tight squeeze. So expect uh, some smaller cars to not have diesel uh, uh, engines when BS6 comes in because the cost ratio versus the product ratio, the value for money ratio that the Indian customer looks for uh, might be taken away. So those are important points. And one last issue that is going to be there with BS6, especially in diesel vehicles, you see, uh, getting the exhaust up to a certain temperature, you have to understand because uh, diesel is uh, ignited by compression rather than by spark plugs and other properties, the diesel exhaust temperature, the temperature of the gas coming out from the engine is much lower than petrol. So the petrol uh, exhaust actually responds better to Euro 6 treatment, the after exhaust treatments. And in diesels, it's a little tricky, especially because of the Indian driving cycle. You see, to get the exhaust after treatment system up to temperature, to get it working ideally, you need to get the vehicle up to a certain speed. You need to get the vehicle engine uh, sort of warmed up to a certain speed. In urban Indian driving conditions with the low speed that we are perpetually stuck in traffic, that's going to be one problem because if this constantly happens, if you constantly drive at low speeds and the exhaust, the after exhaust treatment can't work properly, that system gets clogged up and replacement is going to be expensive. So that's one concern other than the fuel quality that is to be taken care of. But in return, let's be honest, uh, uh, when it comes to pollution norms, when it comes to a lot of other things, especially safety norms, this Bharat Stage 6 is a very positive step. And the two biggest things we'll see in India, if enforced properly, is cars that will pollute less, cars that will be more efficient, cars that will reduce air pollution to a level. And in today's scenario, that can only be a positive as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you for joining us. Remember to follow us on social media for your daily dose of all things automotive. And remember, it's chaos out there. So always buckle up and wear your helmets. We'll see you again next weekend on the AutoX Show.